This is the reaction of aqueous lead nitrate with aqueous potassium iodide. So I'm going to carefully add 20 drops or so, it doesn't need to be exact. And then I will add about two drops. And we can make our observations. Always cap the reagent bottles. Properly dispose of waste in the labeled container and clean glassware. Next, we're gonna take a piece of solid magnesium metal such as this one and add it to a clean test tube and react it with aqueous hydrochloric acid. We'll add about 20 drops of the acid solution to our test tube. We can note the gas being evolved and make our observations. Properly dispose of waste in the labeled container and clean your glassware. Next, we're going to heat solid copper sulfate pentahydrate over a Bunsen burner. We're going to do that in a test tube, and for safety purposes, we'll use a test tube holder. We'll put a small pea-sized amount of our material at the bottom of the test tube and safely put our material away. To light the Bunsen burner, we'll close the oxygen valve at the bottom and turn on the natural gas. Use the striker to light the Bunsen burner and then carefully open the oxygen valve until we have a blue cone of flame with no orange in it. We're going to heat our material in the test tube, holding it at a 45 degree angle and making sure that the open end is not pointed towards anybody, including ourselves. We can see liquid starting to form at the top of the test tube as we continue to heat it. If accidentally the Bunsen burner goes out, turn off the natural gas, close the oxygen valve, then turn the gas back on and relight the Bunsen burner. Then again appropriately open the oxygen valve until there's no orange in the flame and continue your experiment. Properly dispose of waste in the labeled container and clean glassware. this reaction we're going to be using steel wool as iron and heating it in a crucible with elemental solid sulfur. This reaction will be done in the hood as the compounds produced are strong irritants. We'll add enough steel wool to cover the bottom of the crucible and carefully sprinkle enough sulfur to cover the iron. Carefully put away our reactants Now we'll cover the crucible, properly light the Bunsen burner as described before, and place it on a clay triangle 10 to 15 centimeters from the Bunsen burner and light the Bunsen burner, ensuring that the cone is directly on the crucible. Heat the crucible for five minutes Turn off the Bunsen burner. Mix your materials and allow them to cool to room temperature before making your observations.
Dispose of the waste in the labeled container and wash your crucible. In this reaction, we're going to be mixing 20 drops of aqueous iron chloride with 20 drops of aqueous sodium hydroxide solution. After making your observations, please dispose of the waste in the labeled container and wash the test tube. In this reaction, we're again using steel wool as solid iron and reacting it with an aqueous solution of copper sulfate. We'll add a small amount of steel wool to a clean test tube. We'll then add about two mils of our copper sulfate solution to a 10 mil graduated cylinder. Add it to our test tube. We'll let the reaction sit for 10 minutes and stir it with a glass stir rod occasionally. After we're done making our final observations, we'll dispose of our waste in the labeled container and clean our glassware. In this reaction, we're going to be heating solid copper metal in a crucible, reacting it with gaseous oxygen. Put enough copper metal to cover the bottom of the crucible. Carefully put away your reactants. Remember to not cover the crucible as oxygen is a reactant. Appropriately light the Bunsen burner as described before, ensuring that you start with the oxygen valve closed and then open it. Heat the copper for five minutes. Allow your equipment to cool to room temperature, then dispose of the material in the labeled container and wash your crucible. In this reaction, we're going to be reacting aqueous hydrochloric acid with aqueous sodium hydroxide. We're going to add about two mils of our sodium hydroxide to a 10 mil graduated cylinder and add it to our test tube. We'll add two drops of our phenolphthalein indicator to our sodium hydroxide. After cleaning our graduated cylinder, we'll add about three mils of our hydrochloric acid solution and again add two drops of our phenolphthalein indicator.
Sometimes in experiments you have to adapt, so we'll transfer our solution to a 50 ml beaker and add then our hydrochloric acid solution to our test tube containing sodium hydroxide dropwise. After making our final observations, we'll dispose of our solution down the sink and clean our glassware. Best of luck completing the lab with your group. Ask your instructor if you have further questions.